So I'll start by saying that uh, all of us have discussed human trafficking and I found it crucial before we protect and rehabilitate uh, victims, we must understand who is a victim because we'll end up uh, protecting the wrong person. So in Kenya, just like many other countries in Africa, we have limited uh, number of data that is collected. What I found from my research is that in 2016 in Kenya, we only had 530 adults that were reported as trafficked. And in 2017, the number dropped to 352 adults. I found that interesting and quite peculiar that in one year, would have more than 200 people not reported. Uh, in 2018, we do not have any other data. So this picture was a cutout from the Daily Nation. It's a newspaper in Kenya. Um, it's one of the most recognized newspaper article. It was on 29th of July this year. So the picture shows the statistics. Somebody was discussing on human trafficking in Kenya. I will try and discuss the picture. So it says that one out of six people who are trafficked are children. It also says that two out of three, that is between 18 and 29 years, is a youth. Those are the people who are trafficked as youth, two out of three. They say that 17% of people who are trafficked are between 30 to 47, and 67% of those trafficked are women, and 90% people of people who are trafficked who are in Kenya are Ethiopians. So Ethiopia seems to be um, leaving, they're leaving their country on transit to South Africa or to other nations, but they are settling. I don't know why they're settling in Kenya. That is a picture. So Kenyan status is that uh, from the UN Refugee Agency, we used to be in tier two of the watch list, which was a danger zone in 2015. But through the government initiatives, we have moved to tier two in 2018. And this is, uh, the government started uh, having a vigorous supervision of law, of vetting recruitment agencies. And we had a lot of foreign missions vigilance. And also we have signed a lot of laws with the Middle East to curb this, so we moved to tier two, which is a good zone, but we are looking forward to moving upwards to a better place. So this is a legal framework, I will not discuss it because my colleagues have discussed it. So in protection, I looked at four things. Who are we protecting? What are we protecting them from? Why are we protecting them? And when do we protect them? So I'll start on the first one, on who. As I said earlier, we must identify who is the correct victim. And we are uh, looking at concealing their, uh, the identities of these victims because if we reveal their, their status to the traffickers in court, they will again get threatened and will not have evidence in court. We are also protecting those who are stateless, like for example, the Ethiopians who are in Kenya, and by issuing them with IDs. Um, Documentation is very key in a court process. And if we have stateless people, and we, uh, sorry, documentation is very key in court processes. And if somebody has been brought to our courts and we do not have their documentation, we have to find a way to get them out of this uh, system. So uh, when we pick out a victim from a group, we must be able to protect them throughout the process from coming to court, how they're going to get rehabilitated. We're protecting them from the infringement of their privacy. So for example, um, a victim who is brought to court will be asked to give samples. Maybe they had been injured or there was sexual violation. So we're protecting them from people who will want to take out their samples without their consent. As a court, we have that uh, um, responsibility to protect them. We are also protecting children who are under 18 as a court who have been brought as victims. So we are, if they do, there's no uh, guardian consent, the law says that uh, the minister may give consent for this person who is under 18. So as a court, we must enforce this. 
So we also are protecting the victims from um, memorandums with other um, with organizations that maybe they are not uh, well written in law. So as a court, you look at the memorandums that were given by these uh, victims, uh, consenting for their samples to be used, consenting to other things to be done to them. So when they come to us, we look at this protection. We are also protecting them from health distress if the victim has come to us having physical um, injuries, they're in pain or they're in fatigue, they have fatigue, we are mandated as a court to ensure that they're taken to hospital. We are also protecting them from psychological trauma which is continuous um, by preventing it from going on and when if it's there, trying to look for psychiatric uh, reprieve. We also protect them from mental disorders, for example, depression and anxiety, by ensuring as a court that we make sure these processes are quick in court. We do not delay the matters in court. So we're also protecting them from retaliation from aggressors. As a Blessing said that she was afraid to go home because she was afraid that her family might be attacked. So as a court, we are also um, mandated to ensure that this uh, victim is protected and therefore their family is not under attack by potential uh, traffickers. We are also protecting them as a court from corruption in the judicial system. Unfortunately, Kenya is undergoing what we call um, a crisis almost uh, of corruption. But as a judiciary, as, as um, women judges in Kenya currently who are sitting here, we are working very hard to ensure that we cut, uh, we cut those ties of corruption in our systems to ensure we protect the victims. The reason why we're protecting them, of course, is to safeguard the law in terms of contracts. Um, as I said earlier, the evidence, uh, how are they giving consent to these samples being taken, so that in case samples are taken without their consent and they're brought to court, those samples may be used by the defense, uh, the, the trafficker, to say, how did you get this? Is it uh, legally in court? So as a court, you must be alert that the samples ask questions on how the samples were taken. We are also, where we're protecting this is also we, we, we are able as a court to ensure there's better uh, evidence. Through the collaboration with the prosecution, we have meetings to ensure that the prosecutors um, tell the police that you can only collect legally um, accessible evidence. So if you bring illegal evidence, obtain evidence, it will not sit well in the court. We are also supposed to ensure that these suspects are not criminalized and we avoid, by avoiding uh, adjournments in court, um, when the victim comes to us uh, the first time and you see that she's not feeling well and she, you order that she goes to hospital and she's not taken to hospital three, four times, that prolonged uh, poor health will also hinder how she gives evidence. They might get tired, they might even die. So as a court, we must ensure that this is speedy and ma to maintain also um, court integrity through avoiding corruption. Um, we'll also repatriate the correct persons. We make sure we, we know who is the correct victim so that we know who we are repatriating and who is staying. I found that we must protect as judicial officers um, victims during investigations, although we are not uh, actively involved, but because we have several meetings with the prosecutors in our country, we, we, they tell us, or we have uh, out of court talks on how things are going so that you ensure that during investigations there's protection. The first court proceedings, what we do in the criminal court, we have pre-trial conferences to ensure that all the documentation is given at that time. So that at the first hearing, there is no adjournment to guarantee um, that this victim will not be fatigued. At the end of the trial, we also protect these uh, victims because we, they are still under us. We cannot let them go just because the trial is over. We facilitate uh, through um, talking to NGOs to see that they have been uh, taken or absorbed in other uh, trainings or things to sustain themselves on how we are going to take them back to their country or to their families. 
On the how we do this, um, in Kenya we have what we call court users committees. Court users committees when uh, everyone who depends on a court system, that is litigants, the administration, the police, the court itself, the judge, the prosecutor, comes together to discuss the issues that are within, the issues that are coming in court. So every court, we have about 116 magistrate courts, and in each of these courts we have a court user committee, and in the high court we also have court users committees. So through these sittings, there is awareness that is created, and people bring out their issues. And, and in this way, we protect victims because we get reports from probation officers, we get reports from the children officers on what's going on. We have also what we call, um, we, how we protect them is by having um, sessions in camera, uh, that is uh, not having public sessions on these hearings. By, co by concealing the IDs of the victims, we use, um, we are also rolling out, the witness protection agency is rolling out witness boxes in each court where the, the victim stays behind a box and there is a, a tinted window where the, the perpetrator cannot see the victim as she testifies. We use uh, pseudonyms, we use video links. We are um, in the high court nowadays, we have video links. Although it's a slow process, but we are doing our best. And also we are allowed as a judicial officer to distort IDs. For example, in charge sheets, where somebody is being charged, you find that the name of the complainant or the, the victim is written as JWK instead of a full name, Jane Kamau. So we are also enforcing the labor laws. Currently, Kenya has a minimum wage, uh, 2018. Our minimum age, wage is 13,572. This is made aware when the president makes this de declaration every year. Every year we have an, um, the change of the minimum wage. And that therefore, people get to know that if I'm going to be told I'm going to earn 6,000, it is not within my, it is an infringement of my right, and I need to earn 13,000. And creating this awareness, people are, are aware that if I am being trafficked and I'm told I'm being given 7,000, they're aware that this is not the way it's supposed to be. So Kenya, currently 2019, we have seen a decrease in unemployment, which is a good thing, and hopefully this will reduce trafficking in persons within Kenya from rural areas to urban areas. Also, the court um, is mandated by the law that Christine discussed. We have uh, powers to order for physical and armed protection of these victims by the police. Um, witness Protection Agency has also, is also given orders by the court which are called Witness Protection Orders to order the registrar of births and registrar of deaths either to add a person in the registrar of births as a person uh, born in Kenya or remove a person in case they died from the registrar of deaths. So the Witness Protection Agency uh, makes an application to court to have these things amended. We have the mandate to resettle quickly and discretionary um, according to what is in the best interest of a child in case it's a child. Again, as a court, we, uh, although the constitution says that every person in Kenya uh, dependent, it's, it's not dependent if you're a citizen or not, any person, even if you're a foreigner, in case you're charged, you're guaranteed to bond. But as a court, you are allowed also to give strict terms uh, for the perpetrators of these crimes or prolong that bond hearing so that you're having a hearing before the bond is given. This will safeguard uh, the victims. We utilize the safe boxes, as I said, and also we are seeing our laws have enhanced the pre-existing criminal penalties. Uh, we have seen that it's gone to 30 million shillings for one who is convicted for trafficking. Okay. Um, let me go to... We're having a very close collaboration with the prosecution, health workers, NGOs. We have a lot of safe houses nowadays. Um, um, 
let me see, um, I'll go to the end. The NGOs, especially who, when doing my research, I found that have done a lot of work in Kenya and continue doing a good job, equality now. Awareness against human trafficking, heart, uh, building intelligence networks, stop trafficking, trace Kenya, and stop human trafficking. And in this collaboration with these uh, agencies, we are able to assist a lot of victims in safe houses and in creating better awareness through our court users' committees. Thank you.